I'm Dawson Schmidt here with the latest edition of Chart Talk from Trader PhD. Markets have been a bear cat lately, and if you think you're the only one getting psyched out of what you think prices might do, you're not alone. It could take losing thousands of dollars for traders to finally feel like they have a position worth holding, and even then they could be wrong. In recent Market Minute broadcasts, you might have heard Chad mention a squeeze in the wheat market that sent prices tumbling before they popped back up to the trading range that began early July. Some of you may be wondering, what exactly is a squeeze? Well, a squeeze is a naturally occurring phenomenon that forces traders out of a market. Visually, a market squeeze can be likened to the squeezing of an orange, and the harder the squeeze, the more juice that comes out. There are different variations of a squeeze, but more commonly known are the short squeeze and a long squeeze. A long squeeze happens when traders believe a market bottom is in place, and all those interested in taking a long position have bought, leaving few willing buyers left. Conversely, short squeeze happens when the market believes a top is in place, and short selling largely fizzles out. With a long squeeze in the absence of active buyers, the market naturally dips on some bearish news from time to time. That causes the longs to sell and exit their positions, usually from losing too much money or at the very least losing their assurance that a bottom has been put in place. In either case, fear or margin calls forces them out. But another way to think of a squeeze is how bad does it have to get before there are no more sellers or buyers. If you look at the Chicago Wheat Futures chart for December of 2022, the concept of a long squeeze is illustrated quite well. After a long liquidation period that began in May, futures were trading sideways beginning in July, and the longer the futures traded sideways, the more long positions accumulated. During that time, futures tested the downside of the trading range, but never broke it in a concerning way. By August, traders could have been thinking that now was a good time to buy as they thought the market would not move lower than those bottoms, at least for now. But Chad also saw the risk, as he alluded to in his August 10th broadcast. Wheat futures firmed up a little bit here today, taking the pressure off the possibility of experiencing some kind of little jab to the downside that will squeeze out any weak longs. That could still develop, but I don't see wheat completely falling out of bed. Come August 17th, the squeeze began. Futures closed 20 cents lower on the day, forcing the weak longs out. In the case of squeezing an orange, there wasn't too much pressure and there was still more juice left. But come August 18th, the damage was done. Futures sold off even more and traders that might have been considered stronger longs were hit either by fear or margin calls and exited their positions as well. Finally, the juice was gone and a nice bottom was in place. That gave wheat futures a new support level, allowing them to continue trading the range as seen before. As mentioned before, a squeeze occurs naturally and is not a trading strategy that traders can necessarily plan for. So when a squeeze does happen, the fear of losing too much money forces traders to act and avoid additional pain. And that often leads to losing hundreds or thousands of dollars. Thanks for listening. I'm Dawson Schmidt, and this has been Chart Talk on Trader PhD.